through our research here at the university, we've investigated uh, many different ways of trying to get cover crops applied to the crop fields. And what the interseeder does for us is it allows us a way to incorporate the seed while the corn is actively growing. So literally the interseeder goes between the rows and drills the seed kind of like a conventional drill except for that there is spacing where the corn's growing so it doesn't disturb the corn and that allows us for much better soil to seed contact which um, allows the cover crop to get started much better. We want to interseed once the corn is up out of the ground and the weeds are the weed problems on the fields have been addressed so a typical scenario would be the corn's up it's been sprayed and now the the ground is bare and the corn's not too tall so between the 15th and 30th of june would be a typically be a good time to get in there and and intercede we want to take advantage of that time window when the corn's between v4 and v6 uh, to get in there and seed because if we do it earlier the cover crop will directly compete with the seedling of the corn and that will reduce or could possibly reduce uh, the corn yield on that field. There are several challenges uh, when you're using the interseeder. Um, one of them is is cognitive. You have to get over the fact that you're running over corn. And uh, what we've seen is that much of the corn that you hit recovers quite nicely because it's so young. Uh, other challenges include uh, if the farmer doesn't plant straight rows, the interseeder will tend to hit corn on the edges between two passes of the planter. And that does quite a bit of damage to the corn. Uh, another challenge to interseeding is that we are planting seed very close to when the corn crop was sprayed. So residual, the effect of herbicide residuals becomes a huge factor in whether or not you can get cover crops established. And our research shows that this is depending on what cover crops you're planting and what types of herbicides that you're using. The best cover crops that we found were on fields that were simply sprayed with a glyphosate product. And typically uh, we planted hairy vetch, annual rye, uh, radish, different couple different kinds of radishes, uh, clovers, and some winter rye. The Penn State Interseeder or Interseeder Technologies Interseeder can be equipped with uh, a system that will apply the fertility uh, while you're interseeding, which for an individual farm may be a very viable strategy. You can do more, more operations in a single pass. The university's interseeder is set up strictly to put interseed, interseed seed down. The recommendation we had when we were doing the interseeding was that farmers should go out and broadcast any top dress that they wanted to put down and then we would kind of work the the fertilizer into the soil using the interseeder. In the state of Vermont we have significant water quality issues and we have a lot of uh, corn acres. Uh, we have over 90,000 acres of annual row crops and cover crop research has been going on around the country and we found significant improvements to water quality and to soil health by the proper implementation of cover crops and UVM Extension has been working very hard to figure out ways to make cover crops work on Vermont farm fields and so we're looking to hit every window of opportunity we can to get cover crops seeded. And the interseeder is part of that greater uh, scope of work that we're working on. And it'll allow us to uh, seed, incorporate seed 
in the middle of June with the idea that the cover crop would get started well and then get shaded out and then grow again once the corn is harvested. But we're really looking to improve soil health and improve water quality and improve the farmer's bottom line by implementing cover cropping in the state of Vermont. Yeah.